If you're looking for an external storage drive, especially a fast one that's SSD based, then this is the video for you. I've got a wide selection of drives here from empty enclosures to ultra rugged drives that can be submersed underwater for like 30 minutes straight or even military grade encryption ones. And so we're going to walk you through the different options you have, the different types of connections and speeds and all that stuff. So do stick around. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Let's start off with the main types of external storage. The one you're probably most familiar with is the plain old USB stick. These are generally in the sort of 8 to 64 gigabyte capacities, although do go up to insane like 1 2 terabyte drives depending on how quite big you want to go and how much money you're willing to spend, and are generally USB A drives, although some are now coming with both USB C and even things like lightning connectors to connect them to iPhones and iPads. These sorts of drives tend to be a little on the slower side and a little less reliable for more long term storage of data but very good for easily passing data around to friends or family or whatever, whatever else you need. If you need more space, then the next step up is often hard disk based drives, which while they offer great amounts of capacity for relatively low money, they're often pretty fragile and also generally draw more power and can also be significantly slower than SSD based drives. When it comes to buying external SSDs, there are a number of different types or, or categories you can go with. So let's take a look at them. The first one is external enclosures or caddies that are basically just empty boxes with little sort of converter PCB boards inside that convert either M.2 in this case or SATA into USB, either USB micro B Gen 3 or more commonly these days, USB type C. This Sabrent one is also a toolless enclosure, which means all you have to do is push the button on the bottom, open it up, stick any M.2 drive you want in and hook it into the little rubber stopper and that's it installed. It even works with their new Rocket 4 Plus, which is their new PCI Gen 4 drive. Admittedly, it still only runs at 1 gigabyte per second reads and writes, thanks to the 10 gigabyte per second USB port that it connects to. But the fact that you can put any drive you potentially already have in is a really nice benefit. The next sort of type of drive you can get are either the pre-filled enclosures or generally the, the pre-made, pre-built uh, ones like the Sabrent Rocket Pro or even things like the uh, Samsung T lineup. All of those are pre-baked in, so the capacity that you buy is the capacity you get. With these Sabrent ones, in theory you can take them apart and upgrade the SSD because it is just a standard M.2, at least inside this one, but generally speaking, you want to buy the, the right capacity for, for your needs from the outset. They do come in a variety of configurations and these days you can buy one, two, four, eight terabyte versions of this, which is insane. Also, this Rocket Pro feels incredible. It's uh, an aluminum enclosure and honestly feels like a solid chunk of aluminum just out of the box. It's fantastic and it's blazing fast too. There are also ruggedized versions of those sorts of pre-baked, pre-filled drives, like this Sabrent Rocket Nano Rugged. Uh, and this is kind of insane because this is still a one terabyte SSD that writes and reads at one gigabyte per second, but you can drop it from up to a meter without any damage to the drive at all, especially thanks to its nice silicon covering, uh, which makes it bounce instead of, you know, chip the element you were damaged to drive in any way. And it's also IP67 rated, which means you could submerse this in a meter of water for 30 minutes without any damage to the drive as well. Remarkably, the rugged version of the Rocket Nano is only about a tenner more than the standard Rocket Pro. And honestly, I would rather have the more ruggedized version personally for the same capacity. And it's not all that much more. But what about connectivity? Well, the majority of the drives that you can buy today will come with USB Type-C ports built onto them and a selection of detachable cables in the box. These Sabrent drives come with both a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, which will be useful for connecting to newer computers, especially laptops and even things like your phone, 
and they come with USB type C to USB type A cables, which are useful for connecting to a fairly standard set of especially desktop computers. There are also some older drives that might have the USB 3 micro B ports, which was honestly awful, very fragile, easily able to, to break, and is often a bit slower, more like five or 10 gigabit per second than 10 or 20 that USB type C can handle. And there's one other connector type here that might catch you out. It looks an awful lot like USB type C because it uses the same physical port, but it's called Thunderbolt 3 and uses a completely different protocol and is often not directly compatible with USB Type-C devices. Thunderbolt 3 is an Intel technology that you'll mostly find on laptops like uh, Apple's MacBooks and a lot of the Intel-based Ultrabooks and, and that sort of thing, and is a connector that runs at 40 gigabits per second, which is twice what the USB standard can currently do with USB 3.2 Gen 2 at 20 gigabits per second, but its limited relatively compatibility means that you should probably stay away from those drives unless you specifically have devices that you can use that with. And then there are some drives with some extra features, namely added security. There are varying levels of this. Drives like Samsung's T7 Touch offers a fingerprint reader, which when you don't supply an accurate fingerprint means the drive won't unlock and won't allow you to access the files. But if you're a bit more picky about your security, they can go with drives like the iStorage Disk Assures, which are uh, literally listed as military grade encryption and have physical keypads where you have to enter potentially very long passwords to be able to connect the drives at all. Generally speaking, the more layers of security or the more high end the security is, generally speaking, the slower the drive will be as it's often encrypting data as it's writing to it. Uh, so let's take a look at some performance numbers with these Saverin drives specifically. Any of these drives are actually remarkably similar in terms of the performance, so let's take a look at the rugged one since this is probably the one that I would buy personally. Now thanks to their USB Type-C and USB 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second ports, this will write at 1 gigabyte per second and read at 1 gigabyte per second as well. This is incredibly fast, as you can see from Crystal Dismark, and even when looking at the ATTO numbers, which reads more like 930 in reads and 960 or so in writes, that's still incredibly fast. Copying a large set of files, I think it's about 98 gigabytes, uh, to the drive, you can see that it writes at just shy of 500 megabytes per second, which is fantastic. And if you want to duplicate those files on the drive, so stressing reads and writes simultaneously, well, that was still running at around 300 megabytes per second, which is faster than most SAT internal SATA SSDs that I've tested. If you were to look at the Disk Assure drives, these copy at more like 250 megabytes per second, which is still great, especially for the level of security that they offer, although it's about half what the newer uh, USB Type-C drives offer instead. So to wrap this up, if you want a relatively small amount of storage that's very easy to transport, USB sticks are still probably your best bet. If you want to make use of drives that you potentially already have, then get an enclosure like this one, or if you have SATA drives available, then buy a SATA enclosure instead. If you want massive capacities at the cost of not being able to transport them as easily, then a hard disk based option is probably better for you. But if you want blazing fast speeds and potentially even a bit of ruggedness, then get something like this Samburn Rocket a Nano Rugged. And finally, if you want extra layers of security, then you can get something like Samsung's T7 Touch, or if you're really serious, something like this iStorage Disk Assure. Now there's definitely a lot of options here, so I'm gonna leave links to them all in the description down below for you to check out. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to a local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this, because they can and do vary, and of course, you can check out that information to see which drive is right for you. Otherwise, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Out of all of the drives that I have here, which one would you pick yourself? 
and feel free to let me know if you have any other suggestions as well. There are also plenty of other links in the description you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs. There's also Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos and of course you support me directly as well and a load of other videos on the end cards as well. I'll leave some of the SSD reviews that I've done, things like the Sabrent Rocket Pro, the Samsung T7 Touch for you to check out and otherwise thank you for watching feel free to subscribe if you aren't already if you've got any questions do feel free to leave those in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video